So as you may know, we have been doing some retro ups and downs here on What Culture Wrestling. And I started to think, oh, maybe one day we can do like a retro Y video. And then this lovely piece of information just fell in my lap and made me go, I think I'm onto something. And when I say it fell into my lap, I don't mean literally. That would be strange. Well, when discussing The Rock on a recent episode of the Something to Wrestle podcast, though, Bruce Pritchard did drop some very interesting information that actually answered a question that I've had for around about 20 years. Did you remember when all of a sudden The Great One was feuding with Billy Gunn? And it kind of felt like you'd entered some wrestling alternative dimension and you had no idea why. Well, now we do know why. Here's why. Damn it, I screwed it up. And the big point of all of this is that The Rock hated it. He hated it and he didn't want to do it, but some information in case you do need to be caught up. Because Billy Gunn is great. I mean, he really, really is. And if you've never met him, you do not understand how big Billy Gunn is. Like, because he was just around all these Attitude Era guys, they're all so big, you just go, man, I'll be just an average sized human. But he's not, he's like a giant. And like Vince McMahon had gone into a lab and just poured some stuff together and gone, poof, here's my perfect professional wrestler. And yes, out walked Billy Gunn. And he grabbed him and pulled him back in because he said, no, go that way to the ring. And the rest is history. It was also imperative to the success of D-Generation X and the New Age Outlaws because that tag team really was 50% Road Dog and 50% him. And never forget the way they got together was also bizarre because they were feuding at first. It was the Road Dog Jesse James versus Rockabilly who was also managed by the Honky Tonk Man. I mean, that's what they wanted to do before somebody clonked themselves in the head and went, wait, what the hell are we doing? This is stupid. And they pushed them together and wouldn't you know it, magic was born. Anyway, like all good tag teams in WWE, they were only put together so they can be split apart. And now that I think about it, it's only the new day in recent memory that have been able to eat this out because you've got the Hart Foundation, you've got the Rockers, you've got Edge and Christian, you've got the Dudley Boys, you've got the Wyatt family, you've got the Shield. I mean, I could go and do this all day, but let's not because there's a thousand better things to do. And it was the same here with the concept that we could take Billy Gunn and turn him into a single star. And given everything that I've just said, this wasn't too untoward, it wasn't too unsurprising, but instead of sort of, you know, like placing him in that environment and letting him find his feet and letting him develop, we grabbed his ass, the irony, and we just chucked him against the rock. I mean, that's like someone just graduating from wrestling school and being told by a promoter, <laughs> your first match is going to be against Brock Lesnar. That is just not going to be great. And I know I get it. A problem with the modern day is that we don't take people and just pull the trigger on them. But back in 1999, when this did go down, we were living in a very different wrestling world. And The Rock was basically the hottest thing ever. It was also like management just telling the fans, we want you to massacre this guy. They may as well just had a giant sign because nobody was going against The Rock in the late 90s, the only person that could achieve that was Stone Cold Steve Austin. And if you don't know, Stone Cold Steve Austin was probably either one or two when it comes to the most successful wrestler of all time. Literally anybody else got trailblazed by the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. And according to Bruce Pritchard on his show, this is exactly what happened and The Rock weren't into it either. The current executive director of both Raw and SmackDown went on to say that Dwayne Johnson basically saw this as a demotion because he was super over, he was a top guy, and rather than get behind him and push him even further, we were gonna use all this momentum he's had and try and apply that to Billy Gunn. He was like, well, I don't really wanna do that. I'd rather you focused on me. So really, it was now his job to do what management should be doing anyway. And look, I get it, The Rock was so over, he was basically on the other side of the road, but still, I can understand, especially in the late 90s, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog business. Going on to say that maybe the Brahma Bulls didn't have all that much confidence in Billy Gunn, Pritchard then dropped the most out of nowhere statement of 2020 when he said maybe it also comes down to cardio. Explaining that it probably came down to pacing and struggling a little bit to break out of that tag team mold, all you really need to do is go and watch that promo from Raw and well, it sums it all up. Because I mean, my word, my word, even 21 years on, 21 years on, The Rock verbally kills Billy Gunn in the middle of a wrestling ring and the guy had no retort, and I would imagine that most other people wouldn't have anything else to say either. I tell you why he likely actually hated it though, because it all culminated in a match at SummerSlam 1999, which also had the stipulation of kiss my ass, because you know, Billy Gunn was the ass man. But we weren't gonna kiss The Rock's ass, and we weren't gonna kiss Billy Gunn's ass. Billy had gotten gone some random overweight woman, and whoever lost would have to kiss her bum. 
This is wrestling in 1999. Obviously The Rock won after he reversed an attempt to take his face and shove it into somebody's ass. And he took Billy's and shoved it into this woman's ass instead. And can you imagine anybody else that was earmarked from the top being told, yeah, before you do WrestleMania main event, we want to put your nose in somebody's butt cheek. But can also switch that around too. Imagine this had happened to The Rock, who has now gone on to dominate Hollywood. I bet he'd be telling everyone around him his inner circle, we have to keep this quiet. That footage could not get out. And it's probably why sooner or later, Billy Gunn was back in the tag team division with The Road Dog, and that is just what made sense. It really, really did. I know everything has a shelf life, but as soon as we had gone back to that, much like when we reunited Bubba Ray and Devon, Everything just felt right in the world. If you are interested, Billy Gunn is still wrestling in 2020. You can see him on AEW, more often AEW Dark. And that blows my mind. And yes, if you don't know where Dwayne The Rock Johnson is, well, you're actually living under a rock and more power to you. You must be one of the only people in the world. He's basically one. That's it. What's The Rock doing? I say, well, he won. The best part is, do you know where both guys were just one month later, just over one month later, at Unforgiven 1999? Billy Gunn had already gone back with the Road Dogs, the New Age Outlaws were there, and The Rock was in the main event going after the WWE title. Billy Gunn and Road Dogg were already the tag team champions too, so it goes to show how quickly we're moving back in 1999, and also they defeated Edge and Christian. And yeah, The Rock was going against Triple H, who was the world champion. I think Big Show was in there, Mankind Kane, as well as the British Bulldog. You know, I love the British Bulldog. I think he's awesome. Obviously, he's an inspiration to me, being a Brit, and he just went over to America and Canada, and he smashed it. But nobody at this point in time was clamoring for the British Bulldog to be in the main event. And he was wearing jeans, and nobody could understand why he was wearing jeans. I tell you, man, this year is all very strange. It was incredible for World Wrestling Federation business, but just so much was happening all the time, it could be a little hard to keep up. And no, The Rock didn't win the championship here. Triple H retained. You already know the story. Actually, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. It just come back to me. The title was up for grabs because it was vacant after Vincent Kennedy McMahon had been victorious and just decided, huh, I can't I can't be bothered with this. That's a thing that actually happened. Vince McMahon won the WWE title. And clearly, I had removed that from my brain. I knew something smelled off. I was like, there's something weird there. That's not how it worked. That's what happened. Again, what did I just say about this year? I think it proved it. Triple H won. He now the champion. And who did he go on to feud with? The Rock. Amazingly, too, the People's Champ wouldn't be able to get his hands on that gold until Backlash 2000, which was months later. I mean, that was after WrestleMania. I tell you, you could not predict the company back then, and you can't really predict it now, but it's for very different reasons. Also, nobody was calling any of that back in 1999, which makes me really interested to know what's going to happen in 2041. And yes, if you are interested, that's the same time period. <laughs> Isn't it all absolutely terrifying? Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about all of this. Were you as confused as I was back in the day when The Rock was taken on Billy Gunn? You're like, what? I didn't see that coming. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling. Then head over to whatculture.com, read yourself some articles, follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE, and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for watching me. As always, I appreciate it. And let's keep this retro trend going. Go and check out Retro Ups and Downs. If you like this, maybe I'll do more retro-wise. But it's true. It's information that's out there. The Rock did not like his feud with Billy Gunn. And just being honest and transparent, neither did I.